All of the problems I work through in my videos can be downloaded from accountingworkbook.com. If you'd like a copy for yourself, just click the PDF link and you can download a copy to your computer. Also found on the website are links to all of my accounting videos, not just the ones here on YouTube that are publicly listed. They're also members only videos. About 40% of my videos are free and open. The other 60% are for members. If you click one of the members links, it'll take you to a page that looks like this, says members only content. If you'd like access to that content, just hit the join button. Okay, let's jump into the problem. Let's take a look at problem 878. This has us doing a cash budget. So the, most of our other budgets has been leading up to this moment. So when we did a schedule of expected cash collections, that of course computed our cash receipts. When we did materials purchases budget, when we did a labor budget, when we did an overhead budget, when we did an expenses budget, selling them in expenses budget, the bottom line of all those budgets was cash spending. So what we would do is we take our total cash receipts, we take our total cash spending, and we figure out, hey, are we going to run out of money here? That's kind of an important thing to know. And that's why this is such a crucial budget. So let's have a look at Cookie Crunchers. Cookie Crunchers had the following estimated cash flows for the first quarter. You can see there's some receipts and disbursements. I also noticed that we're, we're definitely going cash flow negative in January, so we'll see what that means. The company begins the year with $20,000 in cash and requires a minimum cash balance of $10,000. So as they're planning, they're like, we don't want to run our bank account down to two bucks. We want to be, we want to have a buffer here of $10,000. And that helps them plan their borrowing, right? Or the, if they're going to get finances from a shareholder. The company may borrow any amount from a local bank at an annual interest rate of 6%. The borrowing must occur at the beginning of any month and all repayments must be made at the end of any month. Interest must be repaid at the time of, a, of the loan repayment. Good form, do a cash budget. Okay, three line title, cookie crunchers. and we are doing a cash budget. And cash budgets get dated for the quarter ended and March 31st in this case. Okay, so the beginning part of the cash budget, well actually let's do our heading here. It's just the, the months, January, February, March and quarter. And the beginning part of the cash budget, we have to do them one month at a time. So we say January, here's what we started with for cash. Here's what came in. Here's what went out. Here's what we ended with for cash. And do we need to borrow any money? We kind of answer that question. So let's, let's do it for January. So we're going to start with our cash balance beginning. So our beginning cash at the beginning of January, let's see, the company begins the year with $20,000 cash. Okay, so 20,000 is our beginning cash balance for January. Now we wanna know how much cash is coming in in January. Cash receipts. And of course, this is gonna be added. We can note that, that cash receipts are added and it's 50,000. We'll do a subtotal here, or we could call this like cash available if we wanted to. Like I said, I'm not super picky on headings. If somebody wrote cash available there, I wouldn't mark them wrong. 20 plus 50 is 70. So we have $70,000 to spend. How much are we planning to spend? Uh-oh, we're planning to spend 80. That's a bad sign. That's a bad start. So, okay, cash disbursements. Our cash spent is more than we got. We are $10,000 short on cash. So we would call this cash available if we had any cash. Oops, uh, my writing's gone south here. Cash available. Uh, and we'll put in brackets, we're short. <laughs> and of course, we're short on cash. So if we're short on cash, we're going to have to do some financing. And here are really the three things that can happen in an intro accounting question. Of course, we could do a million things for financing in real life. We could borrow from a bank. We could borrow from our mother. We could borrow from a shareholder. We could take a shareholder's investment. There's lots of things. We're going to be borrowing from the bank, at least in the questions I've written. Uh, and so uh, we can say borrowing. 
repayments and I'll say of principal which is like not interest and then repayments of interest okay so we're gonna have to do some borrowing how much do we need to borrow well it says we want to keep a minimum cash balance of ten thousand dollars we're at negative ten now how do i get back up to positive ten to do it i gotta borrow twenty i'm not going to repay any principal yes the interest clock starts ticking from day one from minute one and we borrowed on january 1st because we borrow at the beginning of the month so interest expense is ticking away but we're not repaying any interest here so that's you know there's no cash flow related to interest until i pay back the loan um so our cash balance after making that borrowing our ending cash balance here negative 10 plus 20 is ten thousand dollars okay so we end january with ten thousand dollars in cash means we start february with ten thousand dollars in cash what happens in february oh good news for cash flow we have 140 grand come in 10 plus 140 is 150 and we only see 90 go out meaning we're sitting here with a $60,000 cash balance. It doesn't really say anything, but I think it's implied here. If we can repay, we should repay. So we have $60,000 extra sitting around. It's available to pay back this debt. So we're going to pay back the principal that we owe, $20,000, but we got to figure out the interest. How much interest has ticked here? It's a $20,000 debt. It pays 6% annual interest, meaning if we borrowed this money for a full year, it would be $1,200 per year, but we didn't borrow the money for the year. We borrowed the money from the bank at the beginning of any month, so the beginning of January. So on January 1st, we borrowed the money and we repaid at the end of February. Uh, repayments must be made at the end of any month. So we paid back on Feb 28th. That's two months of interest. So it's $1,200 a year. I'll do it over here. $1,200 per year, but we've only borrowed the money for two twelfths of a year. $200 in interest will be repaid. So let's repay $200 of interest, bracket 200. So I should maybe have a, a subtotal here. It just dawned on me. Uh, total financing, which in this case is 20,200. And this last one was positive 20,000 and uh, 60,000 minus 20,200 is $39,800. I squeezed it in. I think it works. I think it looks just fine. <laughs> Hopefully you can read that. Okay. Okay. So that's what we had at the end of February. That subtotal isn't the end of the world, but it's, it ought to be there. Um, cash balance ending was 39,800. That means our cash balance beginning of March is 39,800. What happened in March? We took in 90, we paid out hundred. So 90 to the good gives us a subtotal of 129,800. Uh, and 100 to the bad leaves us with 29,800. Now, we didn't do any financing here. We don't need to. We don't need to borrow any money. We have nothing to repay. In a theoretical world, we could invest this money. Maybe there would be investing and we earn some interest on our money. That's a possibility. We could actually incorporate that into a budget. We could pay our shareholders a dividend. That's also possible. But, you know, this question just doesn't give us any of that information. So I'm going to just assume there's no financing going on. Zero there. And we end the quarter with $29,800 in the bank so let's do our for the quarter column the uh beginning balance in cash for the quarter is twenty thousand dollars right it's not a total here we began january 1st with twenty thousand dollars that's what we began with a quarter with i don't need to total this up and get 37 69 no 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 we began the quarter with 20. our cash receipts for the quarter 280 20 plus 280 gives us 300 and our cash payments 80 plus 90 plus 100 is 270 of course that's negative 300 minus 270 is 30 
And then let's see what happened with our financing. We borrow 20, we repay 20, and we repay $200 in interest. So our total financing here is 200 bucks. And that leaves us with 30,000 minus 200, 29,800. Well, look at that. These two numbers matched as they must, right? Our cash balance at the end of October must be, or at the end of March, pardon me, must be the same as our cash balance at the end of the quarter. So there we have it. We've solved the cash budget for cookie crunchers. All right. Thumbs if you liked it. Subs if you loved it. Have a great day, everybody. Speak to you soon.